All right, guys, Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. Uh, I'm gonna go through a little tutorial on Inkscape on how to turn a image into a keyring. Um, as you probably guessed from the title, uh, I'm gonna make a Borderlands themed keyring. I've been playing a lot lately, and probably one of my all-time favorite games. So I've gone onto Borderlands website and I've downloaded a mask, a psycho head mask, uh, from Borderlands 2. Uh, I'm going to turn that from the image into a key ring and I'm going to take you through the process on how we do it. It's not too difficult. There's a little bit of messing about. It takes a little bit of time but we'll uh, we'll get through there. So when you import the image you want to have embed enabled. Uh, if you have link enabled um, and you delete the original document it, the image won't be in this one and it won't work. Um, which for this case won't really matter because I'm tracing the document and I'm tracing the image and I'm starting from there. But if you are if you're making any pictures or anything like that, you want to have embed on. So I keep a habit of leaving embed on and all the defaults as they are. Uh, it seems to work out really well for me at the moment. So we'll click OK and we'll import there. And this is the image we're working from. Like I say, it was it was like a, a Halloween mask cut out. So we play, press plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom in and out. The first thing we want to do is we want to turn this into a vector image. So we click on the image, we'll choose path and trace bitmap. And um, I have live preview on so that when I'm messing about with the lines, we get a pretty decent image on there. Uh, you can make this window a bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. I'm supposed to be able to see a little bit better. I didn't actually make it bigger, did it? So, um, oh, okay. There we go. So I can see that fairly clearly. Now. I'm leaned in quite cl close to my monitor. And I think that should be pretty good. Uh, there's quite a bit of detail in that. You do get more detail than what you can see on this preview, by the way. Um, it's quite difficult to judge it but after you've done a few. You'll learn. So you click OK. This window does stay, hope, stay open. Uh, just drag it down and close that window. And as you see now, there's, there's um, more black than anything else there. So if you drag the back image across, you can see the difference. This is now the vector image that we want to use. This image is finished with, we don't need. So we'll just delete that one. And then what we need to do is we need to select the vector image. As you can see, all of this is selected. And now we need to delete the right in, we need to delete this right in, and all these little dots around the outside. To do that is the, uh, the awkward part, the, the time consuming part so you go into path and you choose break apart every single little line that isn't connected to anything else will be its own box to be selected so this line all these lines around the outside these will all be individual lines all the little circles inside the letters they'll be an individual so we'll select there we'll choose break apart and it'll look weird for a second there we go. Like I say, all these little lines that you can see, these are all individually selected boxes. So every tiny little thing in there. So we'll select that, we'll unselect that, and we will delete all these little bits and pieces. So we'll click and drag. And as you can see, it only selected a few and not the whole thing, because these are the ones that were the whole selection in the drag box that I did. So We'll just go up and we'll do the same for a couple of times. There we go. So now we've got this bit here, I can show you how the drag box works. So if I select that, because all these bits are selected uh, and joined and interlinked, that's one selection and that's another selection. But if I click and drag over these and I do not cover the whole of that last selection, it won't select it. So if I drag up here and I don't select this full little line, it won't select that line. So 
you can kind of use that to your advantage while you're trying to delete a lot of stuff uh, quickly. Uh, I cannot use it on here because as you can see that line there is very close to that line. So if I did this, uh, I still can, we'll do this as much as we can and I will just check to make sure nothing, you see this one selected inside, nothing like that happens. Um, so we'll, I'll work my way around and I will finish at the bottom and I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch me go all the way through and get very bored. I think I might just do it this way, safer. So I'll see you when it's finished. There we go, all finished. So I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll select all of these again. And there is another step that I need to do, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. Um, so if we go path and combine, that puts them all back together again and we're all looking good. So I'll undo that, uh, path, break apart, because what I need is I need the very outside, so this the whole black bit that you can see here, so I'll just click right on the edge to make sure I'm, collect I'm selecting that one. I will copy it and I will paste it. So now I've got two of those. And this is the one that we need to work on at the moment because we're making a stroke for the outside. Um, and I'll show you why I had to do this in a moment. So if I choose stroke paint, um, I want to make this red as a 255, just to double check. Fill, we don't want fill. Uh, the stroke style, we want one millimeter. There we go. So I'll drag this over to this side actually, so you can see better. Um, and I'll show you why I didn't actually just do it on this one itself. So if I go to combine again, um, what it would do is all the inside lines as well, they would have the strokes. So if I put the stroke on, as you can see, all the red lines in here all these red lines the laser would want to cut and we don't want that because they would just fall out then so I do want that that way um, and now I want to select this one I drag this across and it will lock into place uh, it does quite good at snapping into place and uh, yeah so that's nearly done we want to engrave the black part and we want to cut out the red part that's how K40 Whisperer works, it works off three colours, so you've got the black part is engraved, you've got the red part which is cut, and you have blue which is an engrave along the line. So if I made this um, as a with a blue stroke, let's do that one second so I can explain it to you. Uh, again it has to be 255. So if I did the engraving and then I went back in and did a vector engrave which is the laser would just follow the blue line. The same as the cut but you can change the power and speed setting just for that so you don't have to mess about as much. Um, so you, so it just follow the line and do an engraving along the line rather than a cut but we don't want that because this will be fine. So now we need to add the loop. I'm going to add a loop up here for the keyring. If you just wanted this as it is, that's it, you're good to go. You can save it as an SVG, import it and cut and engrave it. But I'm making a keyring, so let's make a keyring. So you select your circle tool and when you drag in your circle, one second, the fill has gone off. So uh, we'll do this and then we'll fill it. There we go. And I'll delete it just so it saves the settings. Uh, so there we go. If you drag in a circle, you can drag the circle basically any size and getting a perfect circle is a little bit difficult. If you hold shift, you can get a perfect circle, um, but it, again, you can easily mess up. But if you hold control and you drag on a diagonal, rough diagonal, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but um, 
it will snap to different dimensions. So the further down you get, the longer you'll have to move for it to snap. So you can drag a perfect circle that way. Uh, so we'll have that this size. We don't want a fill, but we do want a stroke. Again, we want that red, so we'll get the blue, we'll drag the red up, and we will select the circle. How big is that? 19.5. What I'll do is I'll do this at 20, just to make it a, a nice even number for me. Make sure this aspect ratio is locked, otherwise you'll end up with an odd-sized circle. Uh, okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. At the moment, we need to copy this circle and paste it, and then drag it over the top. Well, we don't need to drag it over the top yet. Uh, I'm going to make this 4 mil smaller. So I'm going to do 16. So 16 by 16. We'll zoom in a bit just to help line this up. And we will drag it roughly centre. Again, if you hold Control or Shift, you do get a bit more control over it. No, I want to move it. Thank you. There we go. You need to start moving it before you hold the control or shift. And this is not playing properly, is it? No. The, the pressing your keys does move it a tiny bit, but there's still a lot of movement in there. So, if anybody knows how to line these two up perfectly, I would be very grateful. So that seems okay. So now what we need to do is we need to link this to that. So if we drag over both of those, that will select them, and we drag it down, and we'll link it there. As you can see in the middle, there's still a red line. The laser will come across and cut right across here, and they'll separate them both. So what we need to do is we need to link the outside loop to the top to the top layer. So if you click the outside loop and then hold shift and click the layer you want to select after that, which is this other stroke. And then we go to path and union. You can see a little image of what they'll do when you click them. Uh, we want the union because we want to keep both of them, but we want to delete this middle part. So there we go, we've got the union. And now what the laser is going to do is going to come up, it's going to stop there, it's going to go around, and it's going to stop there and go back down. And that's perfect. That is ready to resize and be put onto the laser. So I'll zoom out slightly. Oh, that's in, out. Uh, control A. Press Control Z. Control A to select all. You can drag it over. And then we'll go to. Nope, don't want that yet. Want to resize the actual image first because we don't want a 250 millimeter keyring, do we? We will have it around 60. So, making sure that the lock aspect ratio is still checked, it stays checked until you start another document. So, we'll zoom in now, and this is now the size keyring that we want. So you select, I'm, select, I'm just checking to make sure, so that's 3.8 mil. 3.8 is quite a decent size. Um, might drop that down slightly to three, to be fair. And again, we'll zoom in. I, I find three mil is pretty good for the key rings that I have. And I'll line that up, that looks pretty good. Now, that was just to give it a bit more strength around in this area. And that's it, we're ready to import it into K40 Whisperer and get cutting. Apart from this step, it's not that, that's not it, this is it. Uh, resize page to selection. You can uh, go in File and Document Properties, which then brings up this box, and you can then resize page to content here and then click resize page to selection there which is then just done or you can just click edit and resize page to selection which is less time 
there is a shortcut as well, uh, shift control and R, which I always forget, and then just do it that way because it's just easier for me. Um, we need to save this now and import it into K40 Whisperer. So save, save as, and it slowly comes up. K40, these are some of the designs that I've made, uh, they just go into there. So, Borderlands Psycho Keyring. Save. Just make sure it saves as an SVG, which pretty much in Inkscape only saves as SVGs, which is why we need to use Inkscape. So we'll come out of here, we'll open K40 Whisperer, uh, we'll open the design file in the K40, Borderlands Psycho Keyring, open. Uh, we wait a moment because it takes a little moment, and then just double check that there is red and black for some reason don't know how to zoom in with this. Uh, oh, there we go. Zoom to design size. There we go. Figured it out. <laughs> we learn something new every day. Just double check that your lines are there and your engravings there. If you did have any vector engrave, make sure that you can see that as well. If not, you've not got the colour right. It'll show up as black in here rather than the red or the blue because you've not set the colour of the stroke, Let's double check there. You not set the, the color of the stroke. I'll I'll drop this down even to 252. Uh, I'll resave it and I'll update the design file here. And you'll notice the inside keyring section here will just turn black. That's going to call me a liar, isn't it? That not save. Have they added a tolerance? File, save, reload design file. No? Oh, we are. There we go. See how it's gone black, but it's still red in here? It's because it's not at the 255 red, and uh, K40 Whisperer will not recognize anything that isn't 255 red or blue. So I'll save that again, and I'll reload it again, and there we go, it's back again. So what I'll do is I'll get the laser set up, ready to cut, and then I'll show you the cutting out.